So we have probiotic acidemia. So it is a uh, congenital deficiency of probiotic CoA. Uh, CoA, Cobaxa is right here, which is used to convert probiotic CoA into methylmalonyl CoA with the use of, uh, with the help of the uh, biotins as a cofactors. Uh, if there is a um, deficiency of these enzymes, then uh, propionyl or CoA would uh, accumulate and uh, that causes uh, propionic acidemia. Uh, so propionic acidemia is clinically characterized by poor feeding, vomiting, hypotonia, lethargy, dehydration, and an anion gap acidosis. The catabolisms of uh, valines, isoleucines, threonines, methionines, cholesterol, and other chains, fatty acids, will lead to the formations of probiotic acids. As we can see right here, even chain fatty acids, uh, uh, other chain fatty acids will catabolize into probiotic CoA, as well as threonine, methionine catabolize into probiotic CoA. Valine isoleucines with the help of uh, with the use of the um, enzyme branch chain alpha keto acids dehydrogenase will be catabolized into probiano CoA, and all these probiano CoA will be converted into methylmalonyl CoA with the help of probiano CoA carboxylase uh, using the uh, biotins as a cofactor because all carboxylases use biotins as a cofactor. Methylmalonyl CoA will use methylmalonyl CoA mutase uh, to uh, convert into uh, succinyl CoA with the help of B12 as a cofactor and uh, succinyl CoA will go into the TCA cycle. So in uh, the case of congenital probiotic CoA carboxylase, um, we would have the accumulations of probiotic CoA right here because it's unable to uh, be converted into methylmalonyl CoA. So therefore, we would have accumulations of probiotic CoA right here, and that causes probiotic acidemia.